and that's facing the setting sun. Some folk don't get theirs until they're up in the years and look like the sun is about to go down and the devil wanted you to think that because some others got their blessing on the east side while they were still young, hallelujah, that you're not going to get yours. But I want you to know that if you are his child, you your inheritance coming to whether it be on the east side the west side or whether it's in your youth in your mature years or your old days everyone that I skip I wish you'd touch your name and ask them have you asked yet <laughs> hallelujah Everyone that asketh receive it. He that seeketh find it. To him that knocketh it shall be open. And then he goes on to compare God and his faithfulness. What man is there among you whom if a son asks bread, will you give him a stone? You a kind, loving father. You got a son hungry. He asks you for bread. And you're going to go out and get a rock and say, here, chew on this. Or if he asks you for a fish, you're going to go out and get a snake. And then he says, if you being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Oh, my God. That's why I say you can name it and claim it, because God is your father. I wish you'd look at somebody different and tell, ask them, have you asked your father lately for what you need? Woo, glory to God. Ask. I'm going to close this. I'm enjoying this. This is ministering to me right now. Hallelujah. Oh, you got to recognize the power of the spoken word. It's all right to hope. It's all right to wish. It's all right to think. But God gave you a brain and the articulation of speech and then there's something how the God that made us we come to him and we can have we can be possessed by a spirit of dumbness and, and never seen the likes of it sometimes I tell the saints just you know just get up and lift your hands and just start giving praise to God. Just tell him you love him. Give him praise and give him glory. And, and if nobody's telling you what to say, you just there. Somebody got to tell you, say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Tell Jesus he's one of wonderful Jesus. Now the Lord gave you your brain. He gave you your speech. So why does somebody have to coax you and tell you what to say to him? Then nobody tell you what to say to that boyfriend or that girlfriend. You didn't even know him. All it was is you wanted to know him. And you fellas, some of y'all are notorious. I've never seen the lady in your life, but you're going to find a way. And you're going to say everything you can say. To get a name and a phone number and address and find out what interests her so you can talk about that and just talk and talk. And some women are stuck with some guys that ain't worth a half a dollar. But he talked his way. And then when you get to church, come on and, and give the Lord some praise. Can't say a word. 
Some of you sisters, y'all the same way. Somebody need to get your own business and your telephone is busy for three hours. Just... Get to church and say, all right, let the music stop. Y'all stop dancing and give him the fruit of your lips. And you say... You know how to talk in every other situation. That same brain that God gave you, that same mouth, that same tongue that he gave you, where you can always think of what to say in some carnal situation, use it in order to be specific and tell God what you need and tell him what you want and tell him where you are and tell him the truth. Don't try to impress us. Though you're on top of the mountain. And you know you're down in the second basement. Tell God the truth where you are. I ought to be on the mountain, but I'm not up there. I'm down in the cellar. And I need you to come get me and lift me to where I ought to be. Lift me up where I belong. Hallelujah. I, I'm not living like you want me to live. I, I want you, first of all, uh, to bring me up to the spiritual place where I ought to be. Because you told me in Matthew 6, if I seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, I don't have to worry about things. All of these things shall be added. Glory to God. He know you need things, but don't put things first. Put him first. I want to be like you. God, I want to be your child. I want to live a life pleasing in your sight. And then I don't want you to bless me materialistically just so I can put it on display. Because I read over there in Deuteronomy that it is he power to get wealth but he does it for a reason that he may establish his covenant when he bless you do you know why he blessed you he didn't bless you in order to make you a person living an ostentatious life he didn't bless you just so you could tell everybody else uh-huh you got a 15-room house, I got a 20. You paid 50000 for your car, I paid seventy five. That ain't why he blessed you. But he blessed you so that you would use it to accomplish his will. I got the clothes. But I want you to know you can name it when you name it, get ready to claim it. Uh, it may not come the first day you ask for it. Uh, it may not come even the next month or the next year. Because when God told Abram what he was going to do, the man was already 75 years old. Mm -hmm. But Isaac wasn't born until Abraham got a hundred years old. Twenty-five years later, after God made a promise, he brought it to pass. I don't know how long you've been waiting, but I want to remind you one more time, blessings delayed are not blessings denied. to wait because it's coming your way whatever he said he will perform and I want you to know we're talking about dying if you got a blessing on the way if that's something you and God have agreed on you can't die until God does what he said